Joe Coy, the great comedian, has a great line, rice is rice. For you guys, it's not funny, it's dead serious. Where we are, where are we right now in finding the next green revolution so many people say we need? First of all, it's extremely important that we find the next green revolution. We have weather extremes that farming has never faced before. So just last year, the worst flooding in the history of the United States agriculture by far. At the same time, the highest temperatures in a number of European countries like France and others, and the worst drought in the history of Australia. Massive wildfires continuing. So we have to help farmers be able to deal with these climate extremes, be able to adapt, and at the same time, significantly reduce the amount of CO2 emissions, the impact on climate change from agriculture. But here's the blunt difference. Norman Borlaug was, was people were being in tears over what he did to change the prosperity, the nutrition of country after country after country. You guys are perceived as bad guys. You're the evil chemical business. There's genetic modification, all the rest of it. How do we get your industry back to the imagery of Borlaug versus being Arguably, the evil ones today? Hasn't that happened over the last couple of years? I'll, I'll give you one example. So Impossible Foods comes out. Yep. And it's, it's a hot product in the United States. Lots of people see that as, a, as an important element of, of, of addressing the planet's issues. Pat Brown talks about the importance of agriculture technology, about GMOs and, 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 the, and the products that help them deal with insects, diseases, and weeds in agriculture to bring this great new food product to the world. It is genetically modified food, which raises the question, I've been thinking about this for a while, so it's great to catch up. Why is the attitude to that so radically different to the attitudes to GMO, say, 10 years ago? Because now we're, the reason it's getting better now is we're starting to talk about the benefits. Before, it was only criticism about why do you need it? The world has plenty of food. There's still a billion people that don't have enough food. And we're seeing the benefits mm -hmm. of, of, of being able to do things like Pat Brown talks about, not till the soil, so you leave the carbon in the soil, yeah. healthier soils, enabled by GMO and modern herbicides. So talk to us about where this can go, the future of what many people consider synthetic biology. Where does this go in the future? How radical can this get? The understanding of the DNA of plants enables us to accelerate natural breeding, to do natural breeding better with big data, at the same time ge genetically modify it if we want to, or even better, the, the modern technology is CRISPR-Cas9 and gene editing. We, we, you take what you want the plant to do, you want it to have more protein, you want it to taste better, you want it to leave more carbon in the soil, we figure out with technology how to make that happen. So yep. now it's a matter of deciding what you want the plants to do, and we will okay. find technology to make it Let's happen. Let's take this from Syngenta, with all the debates of Syngenta, we can say that for another time. This is a great conversation. Eric, when you look at, say, Sir Paul McCarthy, McCartney, and he is leading with many others with this huge visibility, eat less meat. How do you respond to that from the food chain, the, the biome reality of seed, plant, cow, or you know whatever the meat is, and on? How do you respond to what Sir Paul says? The way we respond is whatever the consumer wants, the food companies will make for the consumers. So there's some consumers that want plant-based meats, impossible, beyond meat, others fit that. We'll find products that better help them able to do that. At the same time, some people want to continue eating meat products. We're making meat more sustainable by growing crops that are feed products that are more sustainable okay. and higher conversion rates in animals. You're, with your Chinese ownership, you must be up to speed on this horrific pork issue yes. in China. We've shown the chart on Bloomberg Surveillance many times, put it out for social, for Bloomberg Radio Worldwide, of the spike in pork prices. What is your solution to Chinese addiction to pork and to what they do under crisis like they see now? Well, first of all, they'll, they'll, they'll import more pork for, for, for now, and the, the U.S. Yeah. trade deal will help that. So the U.S. farmer will benefit from the exports of, of more pork to China. But also we've got, we've got to address the fundamental issue here. And one of the things that we do is we help t control the flies and the, and the mosquitoes, the other things that transmit the virus. So we're bringing technology to help reduce the likelihood of that virus spreading. You mentioned impossible food. Let's get to business. Great time for an IPO. Why wait? Well, we're, we've just formed oh, no. Syngenta Group. Oh, no. I just, continue, sir. I just, it, Oliver, are you going to serve Beyond Meat at your IPO lunch? <laughs> Let's get to when it's going to be first.
Okay, well, we might we'll sell we'll serve lots of different products at our IPO. Okay, when one would when, that lunch be, please? <laughs> well, we said when we, when we were purchased by ChemChina, yeah, we said we were going to strengthen the company and IPO by the middle of 2022. We just announced the formation of the Syngenta Group, which takes the Syngenta company, adds to it the Adama company, and the agriculture assets of Sinochem. Sinochem Agriculture puts it all together. Yeah takes us from 14 billion in sales to 23 billion in sales. That's revenue growth. And, and 300 million to 4 billion in China. We, we so got we cracked six, the China market. 60 seconds, this. Eric, when's it gonna be? <laughs> Clearly you're not gonna wait. Our goal is to, we would love to see it happen in 2021. 2021, 43 billion is what you would uh, for. You know, T-Bone. You surpass that, 43 billion plus. We're, we're creating a great company, which is our goal. For, yeah. And then the IPO will follow. Eric.